I'm pretty sure it's on. Yes, we are on. We are on. Okay. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I'm a board certified interventional radiologist in the great state of New Jersey. Now in today's video, we are going to carry on with some of those reaction type videos I've been doing on some medical YouTubers. And today we're going to continue that with a med student YouTuber by the name of Rachel Southard, Southhard. South herd, South herd, South herd, something like that. Someone in the comments below, correct me. Rachel, I apologize for butchering your name if you watch this. So she just posted a video about her OBGYN rotation, I think, and as usual, I haven't seen the video, so we are going to be watching it together for the very first time, and I'm going to react to it. And maybe some of you may not know, but I almost, almost went into OBGYN. So hopefully we can touch a little bit on that, and uh, I'll shut up now, let's get into the video. Let's go. All right, so let's go ahead and start the video. The video is entitled, I Delivered a Baby, Best Week of My Life. Rachel Southard. So it's probably Southard. What am I talking about? Southard. So she probably just delivered a baby as, you know, I'm guessing by the title of this video. I'm pretty smart, I can deduce that. But I remember how I felt after I delivered my first baby. Hopefully we can touch on that a little bit. But I still have a picture from the very first baby I ever delivered. Put it up right here. It's pretty cool. It's way back on in my Instagram. I did a perineal stitch. It was, I think, your eight. <laughs> So I did my OBGYN rotation, the very first clinical rotation outside of med school in my third year of medical school. And after that, I was like, I'm sold. It has surgery, it has procedures, you deliver babies, et cetera, et cetera. I was sold. But I realized that all babies get delivered in the middle of the night. So instead, I chose a career where you get called in the middle of the night for bleeds instead. Not very smart decision. Anyways, the very first baby I delivered, delivered the baby, delivered the placenta afterwards. Those of you who have never seen a live birth, yes, that's what you do. You deliver the baby. And then like a couple of minutes afterwards, you deliver the placenta, which is like a second baby. Sometimes you have to suture up the lady parts because they get ripped in the process sometimes. And that's what they did. It's like the coolest thing ever when you're a med student because you get to deliver the baby, deliver the placenta, and then suture up. And it's all good. Everybody's happy. I delivered two babies today. My first one ones and the first one um they're both vaginal um the first one i didn't even think the doc was gonna let me but then she stepped aside and she's like go and i was just like oh my god that's the most nerve-wracking thing ever by the way so in my OBGYN rotation it was in south georgia and i was working with a midwife predominantly and also the physicians as well during surgery but then we would work with both when we were delivering babies luckily she let me deliver i probably delivered like 25 or 30 babies in that month while i was on OBGYN, like a couple babies a day and i get to do every everything by myself obviously with the midwife and the doctor watching me and like right next to me but like I was the main person and it's so scary but it's so rewarding at the same time I loved it and that's why I almost did this field do you guys remember that story I told it was on the mistakes video I did like my the mistakes I made in medicine or when I was in medical school and residency and one of the mistakes I made was my very first OBGYN rotation where I scrubbed in for the very first time and of course in true med student fashion I screwed up and I broke the sterile field. Well, myself. I like hit myself in the face with my own goggles. But watch the video. You'll see. You'll laugh. The doc was like, so that was your first time delivering a baby? And I was like, yeah. She's like, and that was your first time doing a perineal laceration? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, you look like a seasoned OB. Are you going to go into OB? She was like, that was amazing. Great job. And then she gave me a high five. I mean, this is bringing back like memories here. I love watching people get excited about medicine because that's what we used to all be like. Well, I should say that sounds like I'm like at some old old jaded physician, but I still am excited to do these procedures and stuff. But eventually I'm sure that excitement will wear off. But seeing her this excited makes me excited. It makes me excited for like all the other med students out there. It's cool. It's cool to kind of like relive that again. I know everything she's feeling right now, I felt before. It's pretty cool. I'm so happy. I'm so happy you guys, but I'm so tired and I want to eat really bad. So I'll talk to you in the morning as much as I can, but happy freaking sunday and welcome to this week's vlog so this is how i used to feel when i was doing ir on my rotations so like my fourth year rotation when i was doing ir and i would do like a crazy procedure or whatnot and if i got to do a lot of it or like even placing like a port or something which is so mundane for us now but doing that as a med student or even the first year resident so exciting so rewarding especially when everything goes smoothly and just to reiterate once you do things like this and you do them correctly you're like oh maybe i actually should be a doctor like because you feel like such an imposter this whole time when you're in training but once you get out there in the field in the hospital get your feet wet you kind of like oh like i can actually do this not just read stuff in a textbook like i can actually do this it's it's rewarding they're testing everyone for covid for these kinds of surgeries just because it's everywhere so a lot of my staff during this last covid peak all kind of had to take a few days off and then i know 
The PACU was down a whole bunch of nurses, I think the last week, but we're all back now, but it's all good. And then the other thing too is every patient that comes in for an outpatient procedure has to have a COVID test. And if they don't have a COVID test, it slows things down. There's like so many steps and barriers to getting into a procedure nowadays, but that's what we have to do right now. Yeah, I'm trying to push through. I like, I'm exhausted. Today I'm in the clinic and hope it's a really fun day, which it probably will be. So I am going to get dressed and head out the door and yeah. That's about it. When I was in residency and fellowship, it was so hard to vlog, especially on those long, difficult days when you're in the angio suite like all day long. So I, I know her pain right now. It's so hard to vlog, but you gotta keep the content up. It's so hard, but so necessary. So I'm home, I'm gonna microwave my food, which is an enchilada. It's the last one that my mom made me. She froze them. Is there anything better than when you're on a very tough rotation and someone else makes you food to prepare for your like terrible weeps, there's nothing better. My wife currently does that now, and during intern year, my now mother-in-law used to drive all the way from Queens into the city and bring me food while I was on call overnight. What is up? I am home from clinic. I was so tired the entire day. Like I was fighting my exhaustion all day, and then now that I get home, I'm like energized to study, thank goodness. Oh my gosh, she has to study for step two after these rotations. Oh. That's bringing back bad memories. It gets easier though. The more you like learn how to work and study, for some reason it just gets easier. I don't know. Maybe the test gets easier. I don't know. Don't you love how you're working this hard trying to prove yourself in a rotation in a specialty you want to do, but then you still have to rely on these stupid board exams to determine your fate. It drives me insane. I know it's really dark. I'm sorry. I've not passed out in the OR. However, there have been times where I've gotten lightheaded. And it's really from just standing there and I'm not sure. Well, I do know. I haven't been drinking a lot of water. So this is the problem with the OR. For all of you med students out there or people who have worked in the OR, as med students, there's this weird rule how like you can't I don't know, you like can't take breaks in the OR, which is, it makes no sense because the scrub techs, the nurses, everybody else takes breaks except for the doctor, which I guess kind of makes sense because they're the ones doing the surgery. But anyways, you can't pee, you can't drink, you can't eat. So the problem is, do you drink before you go into surgery so you're hydrated? However, you risk the chance that you may have to go pee or do you just not drink and be dehydrated and then get lightheaded and pass out? Or do you eat? You should always eat before you go. There's no reason to not eat. You should always eat. My rule of thumb is, Always eat and always use the bathroom before you go into any procedure or any surgery because you never know how long it's gonna take. It may be a routine procedure and it ends up taking four hours, so you never know. So just do that. My blood pressure already runs really low. I was in the OR a few times and I'm just standing there and I'm like, I could go down at any moment, but I need to like do foot pumps so I can pump. Yeah, keep those knees bent and you never wanna be that student who goes down. Never wanna be that one because you're gonna be notorious. Everyone's gonna know you're the student that fell out and everyone's gonna think it's because you got nervous at the side of blood, but really it's just because you didn't eat for 24 hours. It's like 8 to 6 p.m. So there is downtime on labor and delivery. There's a lot of downtime on L&D labor and delivery because sometimes it takes hours for a patient to have enough contractions or to dilate enough to have a baby and you're just sitting around and waiting. Watch some TV, read a book, whatever you want to do. So after pregnancy, the uterus is like kind of like almost like this size and they pull out the uterus during a C-section, which I didn't actually know until I was in the C-section. Clear it out, suture it up, put it back in. Yeah, you like get your hand in there and like dig out everything to make sure there's no retained products of conception because that can cause a problem later on down the road. Yeah, normal uterus is just like teensy, like the size of your fist. Pregnant uterus for a C-section, it's huge. I am so tired though, sorry. I feel like I'm just like, tired this week. That's cause I am. <laughs> But nevertheless, I'm so happy and so thankful to be on this rotation. You know, my mother-in-law would always say, she would watch my videos and she would always comment about how I always talked about how tired I am from like all my interventional radiology vlogs I did while I was on call. But realistically, that's like all you can talk about because you're just so tired all the time. One that I just did, the doc let me help a lot. I got to close, which was insane. There were so many different um, layers and different types of, I guess, suturing that you do. Yeah, you actually do weird, it's like a different suturing when you close up the uterus. You do like a locking stitch with like a long needle, almost like you're like knitting a blanket or something. It's completely different from anything else I've ever sutured. And he said that I was a natural. I'm not really a natural because I've been practicing on my suture board forever. That's good. If you can suture, that's like your main thing in the case. So if you're a med student that knows how to suture, like you're actually pretty valuable. Every day on labor and delivery. I'm so excited. I'm here a little bit early so I can round on one of the patients that I 
delivered yesterday. Oh, that's so smart. You gotta get that pre-rounding done. If you do a procedure or a surgery on a patient, you better go see them the next day because the attending is gonna be like, how's the patient doing? You didn't see the patient, you have no idea. Don't look good. Every single day solidifies even further my choice or decision to go into OBGYN. It just, it has so many great, great parts. It's the only field that not only saves lives, but brings new ones into the world. And I think that is so incredibly special. That's actually a good point. I never thought of that. Save lives and you bring new ones into the world. Well, I'm happy for her. I mean, she clearly loves this field and that's awesome. We need more good OBGYNs out there because people aren't stopping having kids. Is that English? People aren't stopping all right so that is officially the end of this vlog rachel southard i'm guessing your name is rachel southard uh, i love this vlog i will say i love how you kind of like recreated that environment for me to relive my OBGYN rotation. That was fun. I had a lot of fun on that rotation. And I'm also glad that you found a field that you absolutely love. That's important. It took me a long time to figure that out. So you found it super early. I think you're like a third year, maybe possibly. We'll see. But anyways, so that's it. Make sure you smash the like, subscribe button, follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you don't already. And as always, I'll see you all on the next video. Bye.